Good evening. Uh, we are back to the Spirits book. Uh, we are discussing uh, memory of the physical life. That sub item still on chapter uh, on, on, on chapter six of book two. And uh, we stopped on 307. So uh, we discussed a little bit about the remembrance we take from our physical life when we go back to the spiritual, uh, to our spiritual home. And, uh, and a reminder that uh, we, we clearly remember the previous incarnation, the past incarnation that we just left behind. Like we remember uh, nowadays, we remember our younger years, our, you know, not all specific details, but overall the most important things, everything that happened in our lives. That's what we remember when you go back to the spiritual world. Then uh, the previous ones, uh, before that, we are going to remember on a need to know basis according to our necessities. Uh, it's not that some that they come back to us immediately because we we have to deal with the struggles of uh, of our this uh, incarnation we just left if we, if we start adding uh, the the others it will create more complication for us uh, more struggles for us to overcome so that's why we we remember uh, clearly the, the the last one we just, the one we just left still have some questions to go there so let's start on 308 philip does a spirit recall all the lives that have preceded the one it has just left? Its entire past unfurls before it, it, like the legs of a journey completed by a traveler. As we have told you, it does not precisely remember all its past actions. It can only remember them in proportion to the impact they had on its present state. Its earliest lives are hazy, like infancy, for instance, and shadowed by the night of oblivion. Swallowed. Swallowed. Swallowed <laughs> by the night of oblivion, yes. <laughs> um, so that's what we were mentioning here. So the Spirit tells us that our past uh, unfolds before, uh, before our eyes, like a journey completed by a traveler. Uh, but, you know, then they say it does not precisely remember all its past actions, only remember them in proportion to the impact they have on its present state. So, again, we, we remember on a need-to-know basis. So, uh, like I said last week, if we, if we meet someone that was not present in, our, in this uh, last existence, but it's important for us to remember because a loved one that can help us we are going to access that memory and remember that loved one. If we, are, if we have to overcome uh, a trauma, a challenge that is, uh, is imprinted on our conscience and we are having trouble overcoming it, we may access that, that past existence like, uh, we, like what we do here sometimes in memories in a, a past life, in past life regression to access uh, the trauma, if it's going, remembering it will, will help us overcome. Uh, we read sometimes in mediumship meetings when the, they are uh, uh, having a dialogue with the spirit, the suffering spirits, the struggling spirits, that sometimes they will show their past lives so they can better understand the reasons why they are persecuting or being persecuted and uh, the, the the, the reasons for, for this connection that two spirits have. So like they say here, our earliest lives are hazy. Uh, it's like remembering when we were two, three years old, we, we don't really remember, maybe one flash of uh, remembrance, but not really uh, any details of it because it's not really important right now. And that's... Uh, and that's what we can uh, remember and how we remember, okay? We discussed this last week. I think most of you were here last week. So it's more of the same of what we discussed, okay? 309. How does a spirit view the body 
that it has just vacated as uncomfortable clothing that encumbered it. It is elated to finally be rid of it. How does it feel when it sees the decomposition of its body? Almost always indifferent, like something it no longer cares about. The best comparison we can make here uh, is with our, with some uh, torn old clothes that we have that we are throwing away, that we are getting rid of because it no longer serves us any purpose. Um, how do we feel about those clothes? We do, really don't care. We're ready, uh, we are happy to get rid of it to open space for something else. And uh, so it, it, the same applies in the decomposition of, the, of its body, right? We don't really care much about it unless, <clears throat> unless, we are attached, too much attached to our physical body, physical life, and do not understand the reality of our spiritual life. That's when we can um, face some problems, uh, having some issues with the decomposition of the physical body, or seeing the body that is motionless, the body that is physical body that is dead, it can cause confusion and uh, cause the spirit to to struggle to understand how it's uh, what's really happening to them because they see a physical body that no longer works and they look at themselves and they see themselves uh, like the physical body that was just left behind so if that's the, that's when it can create some um, confusion for the spirit and can cause some struggle for from this for the spirit. Okay. Okay. Next. Three ten. In time, does the spirit recognize the remains that once belonged to it? Sometimes, but this depends on a more or less elevated perspective with regard to material matters. So oh, when we go back to the spiritual world uh, and we, we are in that state of confusion, we get over it and uh, then we go back to, 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 to the place we just left and we see our physical body maybe already in decomposition. Uh, how does it, we remember, we don't, we recognize and, uh, you know, it's all according to our our mental state and our uh, status that we find ourselves elevation, elevated or not, attached or not to the physical body that we just left behind. Okay, questions? No? Oops. Okay, go ahead. Does respect for the material items once owned by a spirit attract its attention to those objects and is it pleased by this respect? A spirit is always happy to be remembered by those it has left behind. The objects preserved jog the memory of those holding on to them. However, a spirit is attracted by their thought and not the objects themselves. So, what we leave behind in our, our possessions that we leave behind. Uh, do they attract our attention? If we are uh, already aware of our spiritual nature and of uh, the relativity of material possessions that do no longer belong to us because we left it behind, they are they are not going to make any impression on ourselves. Now, of course, it, let's say we left a, a, a dearly possessed, uh, let's say a very nice uh, a box, little box uh, that uh, we bought at an antique shop that we really liked it very much and we left for to someone. Do we care about the object itself or do we care about the attention that the one we left the object to 
gives to the object. And that's what they are trying to say here. We are more interested in the remembrance that the person, the, the care that the person remember us uh, and, uh, and appreciate the fact that we left something for them than the object itself. We know through psychometry that uh, the, the, the mediums can sense stories associated with objects and their owners because owners leave attached their impressions on obje objects that they care. Uh, but a more evolved spirit will not be, um, will not give much importance to the objects left behind. Of course, uh, there is always exceptions. The famous story of that friend of Chico Xavier that liked the the rocking chair and uh, Chico found him in the rocking chair and he said that it was the only thing that he really missed. So when he wanted to rest, he would go back to, to the rocking chair. Uh, but, you know, uh, again, as we become more evolved, uh, we understand the relativity of uh, the, the material objects that we own. Uh, and we will be much more concerned by those that we left behind and by their thoughts towards us that can affect us in a, in a positive or a negative way than the object itself. The object is just the link that uh, will be used by those that uh, received it to connect to us. To, there will be an opportunity for them to remember us, okay? All right, Danny. Yes. I'm not sure I understood the question before. I, I couldn't raise my hand fast enough. Uh, the remains is like the body remains? or Yeah, the body remains, yes. Oh, okay. Yeah. 3.12? Yes, please. Do spirits preserve the memory of the pain and suffering that they endured in their last physical life? They often do, and this memory further accentuates the happiness they enjoy as spirits. Okay, so when we're talking about pain and suffering that we endure during our physical lives, how are we going to remember it? How the memory will be preserved? Um, Let's say uh, you you know you had a, an injury when uh, when when you have you were younger and you you no longer have any any um, consequences of the that injury. Let's say you you know you broke a finger and uh, you had to you had to wear a cast and uh, it, it caused a lot of pain. But once it it, it healed, you no longer have any pain. And you, what you remember, you remember the event, you remember the pain, but it doesn't bother you because it's no longer present. That's how we may remember the pain and the suffering. Now, there is the other side also. Spirits will carry with them the pain and the suffering that they may have been ha living in the physical world. And we see that uh, uh, talking to spirits that still feel the pain of what happened to them, uh, physical pain, still present in their spiritual body because it's what they carry the remembrance of this pain and are not uh, fully aware of, uh, the, the, of no longer uh, having the necessity to feel that pain. The moral suffering, it's a different story the suffering that is can cause moral uh, pain, we uh, the spirits can carry it because until you you resolve the issue that is causing this moral suffering, someone that hurt you, uh, the pain of uh, of of having been separated uh, from someone you love, so this you can carry in the physical life. Uh, in the spiritual life, and then you can carry for a longer time, as we see many cases of spirits staying for a long time, uh, connected to their suffering that they had in the physical world, carrying it with them and struggling with them in the spiritual life. Now, 
uh, the memory of the pain and the suffering when we, we are truly happy being back in the spiritual world is what they, they, they are referring here, uh, ac accentuates the happiness they enjoy as the spirits. Because once you leave, the, you leave behind your physical body, especially if your physical body had caused you pain and suffering uh, in this, in the, in, previous to the return to the spiritual world, you'll be happier that you are no longer feeling the pain and the suffering like we do here, right? When we have a, a disease and we cure ourselves from the disease and uh, we feel happy that we no longer, we're no longer suffering from the pain that uh, the disease caused us, okay? Okay. 313. Oh, Danny, yes. Sorry. I know. I know we have um, a separate chapter and separate discussions about suicide, but all these questions apply to suicide as well, or we cannot include that, like people who committed suicide, uh, like going back and feeling all this kind of. A yeah. Well, it applies. Uh, in a sense that uh, once they overcome their, their 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 struggles as a suicide, they will uh, be happy that it's a, a, a long distance memory. But it doesn't apply uh, when they have committed the suicide and they are back in the spiritual world, because that the the, the act in itself will carry con serious consequences. Because most people that commit suicide commit suicide in the hope that everything ends, that the understanding that everything ends. So when they find that uh, it was not the end, the suffering and the pain are, is going to increase because uh, they committed uh, a crime against themselves, against the divine law. And it's something they cannot come back from because you cannot go back to the physical life in that incarnation, you need a new one. And it will increase the 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 angst and the the struggle for uh, that they are going to face in the spiritual world. So all this uh, applies in general, but specifically for suicides, especially uh, recent suicides, it's it's a whole different uh, story and uh, again a whole different chapter, as you said. What do you mean, recent suicides? The, those that just committed suicide, meaning that the ones that committed suicide on their previ uh, previous incarnation. So oh, okay. he ended the, the, the incarnation uh, by suicide and you are in the spiritual world. I'm not talking about uh, those that committed suicide two, three incarnations ago, because mm -hmm. then it's a different story. And, uh, you know, I, I, I believe many of us are, are guilty of that, uh, of, of having committed suicide one time or another in our evolutionary path and uh you know the, the fact that uh we we dealt with it and we overcome it or or are overcoming it or are in the process of learning from it um can bring us to this category that uh, we are discussing here so in terms of um the pain the suffering like is that dragged on as well not as a um uh, as it says here, but the the act in itself that is inflicting pain to the body, it can also be dragged on like for a while or not. Yes, it, it could be because uh, it, be glad to be rid of the body since it's out of it. Uh, it well, uh, a a suicide, it. you harm your 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 peri spirit with a suicide, right? You harm your physical body and you harm your peri spirit. So you, the, the physical body dies, your peri spirit has suffers the consequence of their of your action. So you know you, you die you die, let's say by by drinking poison, right? So you damage your uh, internal organs. It's going to carry to the peri spirit and it, you are going to keep feeling it in the spiritual world, the consequences. Uh, you have to go into treatment in the spiritual world as you understand what happened to you and uh, you start the process of 
of uh, regret and uh, willing to 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 uh, to overcome what you have done to yourself, you can be uh, start the healing process. But the you, the healing process will only be fully completed with a new incarnation, and the consequences that that act will have on a new physical body. So not necessarily uh, all kinds of deaths. They are not. Uh, they are not. They don't compromise the peri spirit. Like at some point, you get rid of it. But suicide, yes. Yes. And and usually it, it drags. It, it could be something that it, it's brought over to the next incarnation in the peri spirit period, and the body also reflects that. Could be yes. Like that. Yeah. In most, in in the majority of cases of suicide, it will reflect in the next uh, incarnation, next physical body. So, you know, if you if you kill yourself by by as I said by poison, you are probably going to be born with uh, digestive issues, with ulcers, with these consequences of uh, of of, of uh, your peri spirit being affected. Uh, and again. Uh, each case is a case. You can do a extra, an extraordinary work of recovery in the spiritual world. So the consequences in the physical body will be minor, but they will still be there. Or you can do no recovery and you can come with the full consequences in your physical body. Uh, let's say you cure yourself uh, with, a, with a shot in the head, right? Your brain, you can come... Uh, 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 mentally challenged, you can come, you know, with other consequences. But um, but again, um, it's the consequences example, depends on how you act. But if if the person got shot by another person, that, purpose like on purpose or not, that not comes to the next life. That, that's, yeah. that's when you get rid of it, when you move on to the spiritual life and then sort of like reset and start again. Uh, depending, you yeah, depending. In most cases, yes, you, you do not carry to the next incarnation. Uh, again, depending on what happened in this, uh, someone kills you by, because uh, you, you, you know, uh, uh, like uh, uh, um, a bypasser, right? That you had no... Uh, no uh, involvement the killer didn't want to kill you it was an accident uh, you had to die by a violent death because it was in your reincarnatory uh, plan some sort of violent death it was by chance it was that but that that ends the need and so it doesn't reflect on the spiritual body in most cases now you you smoke your whole life and you damage your lung and uh, you don't die of lung, lung cancer. Uh, you die of other things. You never developed lung cancer. But you damaged your very spirit because you, are, uh, you hurt your physical body and you, you con you, the physical body is going to reflect in the very spirit and it can bring a, a problem in the next incarnation, asthma or emphysema, some pulmonary issues, respiratory issues because it's something that you inflict to yourself knowing what you are doing. Again, it, it, it is also according to your knowledge of what you are doing, right? Including the case of suicide. If you commit suicide when you are completely out of your mind, you are not uh, aware of what you are doing, the consequences are smaller than someone that commits suicide fully aware of what they are doing and willing to do it, right? So the intention also has a, a very important role in the, in the consequences on the peri spirit and your next physical body. Okay. Okay. 313? Yeah. Do people who have been happy in their physical lives miss their earthly pleasures when they leave this world? Only lower order spirits miss pleasures that accompany the impurity of their nature and which must be atoned by suffering. Higher spirits prefer the happiness of eternity to the fleeting happiness of human life. 
just as an adult despises the delights of his or her youth. I, you know, I really didn't like this phrase, just as an adult despises the delights of his or her youth. And I went to the Portuguese version and it's not like that. And I, then I went to the French version and the French version is exactly like that. It says exactly <laughs> that uh, an adult despises the delights of his or her youth. I don't know what Kardec wanted to, to say there. Maybe the, 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 signif the, the meaning in French is not as, uh, as uh, strong as it is in English. Uh, and that's why the Portuguese version they translated uh, as an adult uh, ignores or minimizes the delights of, uh, of his or her youth. But the original in French is like, is despised also. So mm. you know, it's funny. But uh, I don't think it's, it's the right word. It's more like, uh, you know, well, we, we remember our delights of our youth, but not really, we don't care that much about it. Because what they are talking here is that... Uh, the ones that are attached to the to to the pleasures of the physical life are lower order spirits, right? And actually, we had one on Monday that uh, was telling us how much he or she would uh, still was still enjoying the, the accompanying those that are having their physical pleasures and following them to to bars and parties and things like that, and uh, saw no reason for for him or her to, to, leave it, to, to leave it behind and not continue doing that. So, you know, the spirits that are attached to the physical uh, pleasures of our physical existence are still connected and miss it and want to try to connect themselves to it. Um, sorry, my dog decided to bark here. Um, but uh, more evolved spirits will will overcome this. Uh, will overcome this uh, this this physical necessities by understanding uh, the the objectives of returning to the spiritual world and the objectives and that they, they, what what they have in the spiritual world that in the end is much more attractive to them than the, the pleasures of the physical body they left behind. Okay. 314. Yeah. When individuals have initiated important endeavors for a worthwhile cause and their lives are cut short by death, do they regret leaving the work unfinished when they reach the other world? No because they understand that others are destined to complete them. On the contrary, they try to inspire other people to carry on what they left behind. Their goal in this world is to be useful to the human race and it is the same in the spirit world. Okay, let's remember this, okay? So we are working our whole life in building something that's useful to to others also, uh, besides giving us um, satisfaction, gives others an opportunity also or something. Uh, how much are we going to miss the work that we are doing? If we understand our spiritual nature and we understand the, that a physical body uh, dies and we can continue our work in the spiritual world, we are not going to um to regret leaving behind because we if we prepare it well we know that others will continue our work and we can continue also to guide and inspire them back in the spiritual world uh, or continue to do the same type of work in the spiritual world if it's possible now if we don't do our job as it's supposed to be done, and we leave it uh, not the, the 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 endeavor. We leave it not uh, well prepared to survive the the our uh, absence of it. Then we may regret because we see something that we build our uh, during our life being. Um, mismanaged or even destroyed by those that don't know how to take care of it. Then can cause us uh, some uh, frustration. 
that's why it's important for us, whatever we are doing that we think it's important and we are leaving behind to others, to, to prepare others to take care of, of the work and to continue our work. Uh, we talk about uh, in spiritism about uh, spiritist centers and uh, spiritist organizations, and uh, it's it's very um, common that uh, when they lose uh, one of the leaders, uh, go back to the spiritual world, they enter into a period of uh, turmoil or uncertainty until they find uh, a replacement and they can continue to carry the work. But those that uh, understand the need for the continuation of the work will be uh, careful to prepare those that can carry on the work. Okay. Okay. 315. Yep. When individuals leave behind works of art or literature, are they still as interested in these matters when they reach the spirit world as they were in this world. They view them from a different perspective. According to their elevation and often criticize what they once admired. Read the next one, it's the same subject. 316, is a spirit interested in the unfolding of events in this world that affect the progress of the arts and sciences? That depends on its degree of elevation and the mission it may have accomplished to accomplish. What appears brilliant to you is often trivial, trivial to spirits. If they take an interest in it, it is only as a teacher takes an interest in the work of a schoolboy. They survey all indications of elevation for incarnate spirits and take note of their progress. Oh, when we talk about uh, arts, literature, science, how the spirits view it after they go back to the spiritual world? Well, they view it from a different perspective. That's obvious because they are no longer here incarnated, restricted by the physical body. But according to their elevation, they are going to see it differently. So uh, you let's say you are a uh, you are a writer you you left a book and um, that was relevant that you are proud of your work uh, when you go back to the spiritual world you can uh, appreciate that your book that your work is still being used is still being uh, of help to humanity or you can even look from a different perspective and criticize uh, what you once wrote because you can see that they no longer apply. So it depends on your uh, evolutionary path and your understanding of the subject, you may change your view on the work that uh, you left behind. But, um, you know, you can imagine that uh, uh, a spirit, let's, let's, uh, think about Plato, right? And all the teachings he left. I, he may uh, think of that uh, the, his works were not uh, fully complete or that he could have done better, but he's going to be uh, um, happy. He's happy with the work that he has done and the legacy that he left to humanity. So the, the importance that the work has to, for humanity is what the spirits, as they become more evolved, will look back and understand, right? Again, um, the, 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 the word feeling proud, it's, it's complicated because we, use, we talk about pride in different senses here, right? But proud in the positive sense of the work you have done is helping humanity. It's, it's, it's something that, uh, you know, I'm sure that spirits that did a good job uh, left behind a good work um, are, are proud of it, right? Um, you can think of Michelangelo and all the artworks that he left for us. Uh, how can he not be happy of, of the beautiful works that he left for humanity to appreciate? Uh, then in the second question, they talk about uh, if they are going to 
follow the events, the arts and sciences. Of course, the progress of science will interest the, the spirits because oh, as science progresses and the spirits are going to come back in a new incarnation, they will be happy to know that some problems that they have faced in this incarnation are, going, are not going to be present in a future incarnation because science has evolved enough and has overcome the, the, the challenges. Uh, in terms of arts, again, um, you know, we have Ricardo here that just uh, did a beautiful presentation on Monday uh, on the, the release of, uh, of Earth, uh, <laughs> of Will Smith's new, wor new work on the Welcome to Earth. And, uh, you know, I'm sure his music will stay with him when he's back in the spiritual world, and I'm sure he'll be happy with the work that he has done. Uh, is he going to criticize himself? Well, we hope so, because if we evolve, we find, uh, you know, as a musician, you want, always want to improve. So when you are going to look back at your work, you'll be going to feel proud and you're going to feel that you could have done better. Right, Ricardo? <laughs> always. <laughs> <laughs> Congrats on the work, Monday. It was beautiful. Thank you. Thank you so oh, much. Monday, no, Tuesday. Yes, it was Tuesday. <laughs> <laughs> okay. 317. Do spirits retain a love of their country and patriotism after death? For elevated spirits, their country is the universe. In terms of the earth, they only prefer the spot wherever the most like minded individuals assemble. A spirit's circumstances and perspectives are infinitely diverse according to their many degrees of moral and intellectual development. Higher spirits generally stay on earth for short periods of time. Everything that happens here is so trivial in comparison to the splendor of infinity, yet human beings attach much importance to incredibly foolish matters. Higher spirits have very little interest in earthly things unless they have been sent here with a mission to contribute to the progress of its people. Lower spirits visit our earth more frequently, but have a higher perspective of earthly methods than humans. Most spirits are sedentary and make up the ambient population of the invisible world. They retain the same ideas and tastes that they had while clad with their corporeal envelope and intermingle at our gatherings in business and during pastimes. According to their character, they partake in all of these matters more or less actively. No longer able to satisfy their material passions, they relish watching those who immerse themselves in their indulgences and encourage them to do so. Some have better inclinations and simply watch and observe in order to bring about their advancement by acquiring knowledge. Okay, so that's an important question, right? Uh, if spirits retain a love of their country and uh, keep the patriotism, right? Um, we can imagine that uh, you are going to fondly remember if you had a nice experience again, it depends on your experience, where you just, uh, what you just left behind, right? Uh, but in terms of uh, how you, you keep this, uh, love of the country and especially the rivalries with other countries that we see, uh, that, that it changes and it can change more or it can change less, but it, it really changes when you have a, a, an eternal view of yourself and understanding that your passage for a, in this past incarnation in a specific country was according to your necessity because of, uh, of uh, the situations you are going to face, the family, 
things like that. So you may retain a phone memory of the country that you were just uh, born, but you don't really have the what you know the patriotism here in the sense of uh, you know your country is better than others or this sense of patriotism that we see here um, when we're talking about elevated spirits. Uh, spirits that are more uh, earthbound, more connected to the physical world, they they are probably going to 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 have a much more um, sense of patriotism is still present and try to influence the decision. So, so let's say someone that, uh, again, we're talking positive sense, okay? Because in negative sense, if you, if you, are, if you have this patriotism in terms of uh, you are the only ones that, uh, that, that do any good and all the rest is bad, then it probably, you are probably going to end up in the rest because you need to, to see the other side of it. But if you are looking at a country in a positive way and you are happy with the involvement, um, you know, uh, and you want to continue helping this country move forward in a positive way, it's it's very likely that you will come back to to a new incarnation in this country and you continue to to have the connections to it, right? When uh, Kardec comes here with the explanation that uh, higher spirits uh, stay on Earth for short periods of time. They come here on missions. They come here to help humanity. So, are they worried about the, the you know, the, the the skirmishes that happens between countries, the, the small wars and battles? No, they are not. Are they worried about our destruction of the our the climate change, our destruction of the ozone layer? Yes, they are because they want Earth to evolve and they are they want to the planet to be uh, useful. To, to, to future future incarnations, even if they are going to come back or not. So you see it from a broader perspective. The higher spirits are worried and concerned about the planet as a whole, not about particular countries. But most of us, as they say here, most spirits uh, like us are surrounding uh, the places we just left and connected to those that are still incarnated or are still uh, are discarnated around the place that we are. So in that sense, it's very possible that we continue and come back to re reincarnate in the same uh, country or the same uh, environment with us, uh, with those uh, that we, we care for and some others that we have to resolve. But it doesn't mean that uh, we can uh, not jump one incarnation to another place that, uh, let's say, you you know you have uh, you have some um, prejudices against a specific people or country. Very likely, you have you have an opportunity to incarnate there to overcome your prejudices, uh, and then you can come back to 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 where you were before. Uh, again, there's no written rules about it. It's just a consequence of where your um, vibrationary state mind takes you and uh, the connections you have in the physical and spiritual world. Okay. Danny. So um, for people like who are um, extreme, for example, who kill or uh, get involved in, in wars in name of its love for its country or its culture or its superiority. So these people who might inflict a lot of pain, suffering, destruction in, in this name, would they even go back to the places where they, you know, fought for because they loved it so much? Like, I can give a, a, a extreme unlikely. Hmm? unlikely. Unlikely. Yeah, like for example, 9/11, right? The yeah. magnitude of the damage they made in name of their patriotism and the love of their mm -hmm. nations and nation in in uh, language and everything. Are because I remember one of the anniversaries of September 11th, maybe 10 years ago or so, we got 
someone in our meetings that was still very angry and said they were still plotting revenge and stuff. So they were still connected to that patriotism, to that uh, love for their country. So are they, you said no, so they wouldn't even come back to the same no. country or even to earth? <laughs> Well, to Earth depends. Uh, depends on uh, as we are going through a, through the transition to a world of regeneration. We we mentioned that those that are doing evil without any intention of uh, modifying their ways are are very likely not coming back to Earth. They are going to take to a more primitive plan. Now, if you are a you are not the leader, but you are a follower, let's say on on this fanaticism. You, it's very unlikely that you are going to be born in that uh, same country. It's very likely that you are going to be born exactly on those that you are persecuting, amongst those that you are persecuting. Like, uh, you know, the, the, you see in the Spirit's book, a slave owner will be reincarnated as a slave. Um, you know, so that's the, 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 what's, what normally happens because that's how they are going to, to learn uh, that the, 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 the struggles of being persecuted, the consequence of, well, of what they have done. Again, it's not black and white. There is a thousand of gray uh, tones in, the, in between. So we, but uh, in general terms, it's unlikely that uh, if you abused your patriotism, you are going to reincarnate in the same place because it doesn't help you move forward. And we, the objective of the reincarnation is always to move forward. So you need to have an opportunity to repair the mistakes and learn and move, move forward. Yeah, because the, the, the examples can vary so much, right? It cannot be only about violence. There are a lot of people who have a lot of power in their jobs, in their uh, political lives, maybe that can misuse their powers in the name of patriotism as well, right? And, yes. and misuse really badly. So yeah. um, every time you misuse, in, you know, for any reason, you are going to face consequences, and the consequences are not going to be an opportunity to go back to to con to, to continue the work you were doing. It's going to be a consequence of having to face the consequences of what you have done, right? We're, what we're talking here is, let's say, you know, um, let's give an example of ourselves. We are here trying to disseminate spiritism in this country, which is in its very infancy and is just in it's starting. Uh, do we have, you know, it, is it likely that we will come back to a new reincarnation to continue the work in this country? and? see the results of our work? Yes, it's, it's likely. Um, it can happen, it may not happen, but it's likely because it's something that uh, we can continue doing the work, right? So um, th this is what I'm talking positive ways, like someone that uh, is working on, uh, has worked her, their whole life here in the United States in, in curing cancer, in, the, in researching for cures for cancer, and then you know, they go back to the spiritual world and they, you know, they continue helping from the other side and they, they can come and finish their job here in the US again because it's the best place. They're going to come back here because it's positive. They are progressing. They are helping humanity. So in that sense, you are, con you are going to come back to where you were before, right? Uh, but, uh, you know, on, 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 on cases that uh, you are harming others uh, through any means, it's going to create consequences. And one of them is definitely not the opportunity to come back to, the, to where you were before. Or if you come back, you come back very compromised or in a very difficult situation in terms of your ability to, to use the same tools that you, you had. Okay. Any comments here, Elmo? Uh, no, I think it really depends on the involvement of the spirit and the project that it's doing. The degree of primarily, I think it's pride. The least proudful is the one who will 
better understand that he or she is a servant of a much bigger project than one, oneself, the more proudful we're going to see him or herself as the main character in that project. And that goes for country, that goes for everything. Um, just yesterday in our, <clears throat> we were talking about of leaving this world and recognizing one another as brothers and sisters more than husband and wife, sons and daughters, and which is almost impossible to us, right? At the level of, um, of evolution. It's very likely that we will continue to recognize our spouses as our spouses and not as a brother and sister. And does that apply for countries for things? It should be. When I, when I leave this world, uh, I'm going to identify myself, recognize myself as Brazilian or American, or I will recognize myself as another spirit back in the spiritual world with no longer any attachment to, to patriotism, to country, to land, to family, and all those things. It's, it really depends on our moral evolution. I think pride is the center of this discussion. Next. 318. Do spirits change their ideas when in the spirit state? Very often. A spirit's ideas undergo drastic changes as it becomes dematerialized. It may occasionally retain the same ideas for a long period of time, but gradually the influence of matter diminishes and it sees more clearly. Eventually, a moment arrives when it seeks the means of advancing. Um, how do we change our ideas when we are back in the spiritual world? Um, depends on how much attached we are to our, our ideas, right? Uh, we see here uh, amongst all incarnate ones, people that are very stubborn with their ideas and uh, refuse to entertain different uh, opinions and uh, different uh, ideas. And, uh, and we see people that are much more flexible, that uh, are open to, to new ideas, to new opportunities. So this, when they go back to the spiritual world, they will, you will reflect exactly who they are. Right, we, we, we recently studied on Sunday in the book Liberation, the avoid, right, which is the mono idea. You become obsessed with one idea and uh, you cannot think of anything else. Um, you see a spirit that didn't go any drastic change. On the contrary, it fixated in one idea of persecution, of hatred, until it lost its very spiritual form. And, and became an avoid. So not all spirits will change uh, ideas, but of course, uh, uh, an average spirit that has no strong preconceptions, no strong ideas, it's open. We'll go back to the spiritual world and with everything that opens up in the spiritual world, we'll change their ideas. We will have different uh, views and opinions of things that uh, it didn't have before because uh, let's say you you believe in the spirit that uh, the soul survives the, the death of the physical body but you're not sure what happens on the other side you are near really didn't care that much you were just uh, you know following what uh, was going on but uh, you never focused on it but still believe that uh, you are going to survive so we wake up on the other side and you find that what you believe is true there is a survival of the soul, but you have no idea how things work there and you never cared about it. So uh, with all the new discoveries you are going to make in the spiritual world, your ideas are going to keep changing as you understand better your spiritual nature. If you have ideas, more strong ideas on, uh, uh, and uh, more uh, fixated ideas, not one, but uh, some, then it becomes more difficult, right, for you to change. Let's say you, you, 
are involved in a group that uh, <coughs> was doing some sort of a, um, of propaganda or of any kind, not you know, not harming others specifically, but uh, following very strict ideas of how life should be lived and uh, what you are doing here. You know, let's say some religious uh, followers that have very strict uh, following. Uh, they don't hurt anyone. But uh, for them, it may be, be a much more difficult to change ideas. Let's think, for instance, the Amish, which is a very nice community, have very uh, progressive ideas on, on one side and very backwards ideas on other side. So for them, that they have a strong belief in what uh, they follow, it will much be much harder for them to be open to different ideas if they uh, they are because they are going to find themselves in the spiritual world surrounded by other Amish people that uh, vibrate at the same level. They are going to find themselves in a nice place, probably because they normally live a very a positive life, even if it's by old costumes, right? Uh, old traditions. Uh, but uh, it may take them a while for them to accept and understand that the there is much more than what they just left behind and that there is a whole new reality that we evolve uh, because they, they are, they are, what they are doing is, is rejecting uh, uh, the material evolution of the planet, of, of us as human beings. So th can they have a problem with that? Yes, they can. So that's the difference, uh, how our ideas will change in the spiritual world. I have a question. I have a question. I'm, sure, I'm, so, I'm so not clear. By itself, I'm not regarding any fixation of ideas. Does the spirit world by itself, by it nature, by its nature, propitiate and facilitates the the potential change of ideas? They do. Yes. It, it opportunities, does. It does. yes. It motivates, it incentivizes, it yes. propitiates, it facilitates the change of ideas. Okay. Yes, it That's does. That's not, regard, but... not regarding the particular cases of fixation. Okay. Yeah, yeah. No, it's, it's the, but the choice is individual, right? Your free will. The opportunities are there, but if you are going to take or not, is your own decision. No, but my question is, do they do we have more opportunities there in the spirit world than we yes. do have in the material world? Yes, the, the, it's do. a whole different uh, ball game, okay. let's say. Okay, yes. okay, so, okay. Yeah. we have more opportunities there. Okay, thanks. Yeah. Doesn't mean that we're going to take take advantage. No, of no, because of like, or because of what you mentioned, big fixation yeah. of ideas. You know, no, no, you explained that quite well. But generally speaking, that's what that was my my take. Yeah. All right, so let's read the next one. I know we're on top of the hour, but let's finish this chapter so we leave the funerals for last next week. 319. <laughs> As spirits have already <laughs> lived the spirit world before they incarnate here, why are they astonished when they re-enter that world? This feeling is only fleeting and results from the confusion that follows their waking. They soon recover their consciousness as the memory of the past comes back to them and the impression of the earthbound life is erased. Um, you know, wh why we are astonished when we re-enter the spiritual world? Because we have been uh, constrained by the physical body for some time and uh, when we see everything that uh, it opens up in front of us, we are going to be astonished, even if, uh, you know, we've been there before. Like watching a beautiful sunset, right? We can be astonished. We've seen the sunset many times in our lives, but we see a beautiful sunset and we are astonished anyway. It's, uh, it's the same thing. We see the spiritual world again and we feel... Uh, the, the, the happiness of, a, of a, a new world opening up before our eyes, even if it's something that we've seen before. So yes, that's the, 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 what can happen. But yeah. again, as we get used to it, uh, 
it's, uh, you know, life goes back to normal, right? Yeah, but once again, you know, that's, that's a general trend, okay, yes. which I understand. But then there are cases in which we are so attached and so fixated to the earth kind of material likes, uh, you know, inclinations that we may not see it that way. Yes, we may not even understand that we are back in the spiritual world. Ex we, exactly, we, exactly. Yeah. Yeah, okay. or we can uh, stay in this state of confusion for a very long time and uh, see only sh uh, darkness and shadow around us, not seeing the, the, the beautiful aspects of the spiritual world. Yes, yeah, very possible. Depends on our our vibr uh, vibrations, uh, right? Our mental yeah. state. Yeah, exactly that. Thank you. Okay. Um, so we stop here. Next uh, week we study the the commemoration of the death and funerals. Um, Daniela is advising us that book club will discuss chapter eight next week. Okay. Uh, on this Saturday we have a special a special event on the by the United States Spiritist Federation. It's a special edition. Uh, there will be six speakers talking about the women of the gospel. Okay, uh, talking about Mary, the mother of Jesus, and other women that were important in the gospel. So we will have six speakers: then Assisi, Ligia Carvalho, Livia Wehara, Yasco, Aracava, Peter Hayes, and Marcelo Neto, representing the Spiritist Federations around the United States. So this Saturday at 11 a.m., uh, it's going to be very beautiful because it's, um, it's a wonderful subject talking about the women on the gospel, okay? Uh, this Sunday, we have um, the, the gospel according to Spiritism. We're going to study the gospel according to Spiritism. And next Sunday, Jusara, is going to present our year-end lecture, Perseverance, Perseverance Workers, uh, which is also very Christmas-related or year-end related. It's a beautiful lecture that uh, she's going to present. Okay, that's uh, Sunday, the, 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 the 19th, Sunday the 19th. The 12th is the gospel, according to Spiritism, okay? Um, I think that's all. Uh, Soraida, can I do our final prayer? Yes. As we come to the end of our first part of our meeting, with our hearts full of gratitude, we thank you, dear Lord, for the spiritual benefactors, our guardian angels, most important, our Christ, who is always here to helping and guiding our teachers and all that are in, involved in this meeting, in all meetings. We are grateful for that. We ask that we continue throughout the week, helping all those that are going through much difficulty still. May we keep ourselves in prayer for them, those that are in need in hospitals, in hospices, the homeless, and those that have lost so much. Keep ourselves focused with prayers and our studies always. And with that in mind, we ask permission to close this part of the meeting tonight. So be it. <laughs>